Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. We'd like to welcome you to a, a private communion here. Many of you who are on the internet don't have a home fellowship or a, um, a, a physical fellowship group that you're involved with. Many of you have been saved outside of the denominations and that you do um, not have anybody to have communion with. So we'd like to offer this um, communion with you as well. So if you do have um, a cup, a small cup of wine, or if you have juice that you use instead, and a um, and a little bit of a unleavened bread of whether a cracker or a communion wafer itself, we'd like to invite you. So um, please get that if you do before you watch this video further. The importance of the importance of communion in our personal walk is is, is a, um, a very serious thing. The, the apostles um, had communion often, and it, as a reminder, not as a mystical transubstantiation um, where the, the cup literally turns into the physical blood and the bread turns into the physical body of Jesus where you're eating his flesh, but as a, as a figurative reminder what the Lord had done for us. And it's very serious when we look at this. Um, the apostles had warned the congregations, and and uh, the apostle the apostle Paul had wrote in the book of Corinthians, chapter eleven, First Corinthians, chapter eleven, to, that we should self-examine ourselves before we partake of this cup, knowing the severity of this, that we're not drinking and and eating communion with damnation upon ourselves. This is a very, very holy thing. It's very, it is very spiritual, and it's a place where we meet the Lord in a personal walk, whether it be with others or by ourselves. It's a very intimate, internal reflection of where we where we are, and when we examine ourselves, as the Scripture says, we look towards ourselves of why we need a Savior, why we need. The body and blood of Christ and why we are in a new covenant to make sure that we're seeking the Lord in pure motives that we must be honest within ourselves that we have sinned or if there's things that are in sin in our lives that we need to remove and have those bondages broken it's important as a, as it's written in first John chapter 1 verse 9 that if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and therefore, when we look to our to our personal walk and, and our need for forgiveness of sins, it's important to be reminded that there are only two times and references of what the scriptures say that there will be no forgiven forgiveness of sins, and one of them is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and the other is taking the mark of the beast when it is introduced. But if you've lied, you you've, if you've stolen, if you've committed adultery, if you false if you false taught people and false teachings if you fell into um, different doctrines denominations theologies that are that are wrong and you've been beguiled and or if you false prophesied um, if you if you've broken any of the commandments those all can be forgiven but we must confess our sins to the Lord and ask him when we do sin to wash us of that sin and cleanse us of all that unrighteousness and continue to pursue. There's many of you who are sitting there now who have been backslidden, who are sitting on your couch and have not been in fellowship because you know that you've been you've been using drugs or you've been sleeping with your girlfriend or, or whatever the sin is and you think that it's just you're too far gone. We want to remind you that there is nothing too far gone for the love of the Lord for you and his power by the Holy Spirit to restore you and bring you back into a right right standing relationship with him and it is a beautiful thing. So if you're sitting there, you're one of those people, or if you're if you're if you're feeling you're right with the Lord and you just don't have communion, we want to invite you to have communion, to be to be reconciled, to, to be reminded why we need a Savior. In the scriptures that teach in First Corinthians Chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, 
that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And so while we're here, we take this bread and we, and, and we pray and we, we, we say, Lord, please, just meet us here where we sit, where we stand, where we are. And Father, we pray in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, that this is, that this is honoring to you. That you search our hearts, that you bring us into that self-examination, that you bring conviction of sin where sin is, that we may be cleansed and forgiven of all unrighteousness. And we lift up this bread to you. And we break this bread in remembrance of your body that had been broken for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And the scripture says, After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he come. We lift up this cup, and Father, we thank you so much that by your, son, your son's blood that we may be forgiven and cleansed and be reconciled but in your in your wholeness through the power of the holy spirit we drink this cup in remembrance of the death of the lord jesus in the name of yeshua amen well, thank you for, for being with us and we just pray that this just moves mightily in your in your personal walk to a more deeper intimate relationship with, with Yeshua. This is Marta's ministry. Shalom. Mm -hmm.